Welcome to worship on this time of blue of Christmas as we recognize those who are blue in this season and as we bring our blueness before our Lord. We begin on page three in your bulletin. God be with you. And also with you. Lord, it is night. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of God. It is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is dark. That our fears of the darkness of the world and of our own lives rest in you. The night is quiet. Let the quietness of your peace enfold us, all dear to us, and all who have no peace. The night heralds the dawn. Let us look expectantly to a new day, new joys, new possibilities. Loving and gracious God, in the quiet of the evening, in the darkness of the night, in the stillness of this place, we gather with friends and strangers, we come with deep feelings of betrayal, hurt, sadness, anger, fear, grief, shame, and relief. Knowing that your love is deep, deep enough to accept all our feelings, to hear all our laments, to receive all our longings. As these candles pierce the darkness in this place, let your light pierce the darkness of our lives. We pray in the name of Jesus, the light of the world. Amen. As the dark awaits the dawn, so we await your light. O star of promise, scatter night, loving bright, loving bright till shades of fear are born as the blue expected hour before the silvering skies we long to see your day arise whole and wise whole and
shine your future on this place and lighted every guest that through us stream your holiness bright and blessed bright and blessed come dawn O Son of Grace A reading from Luke the first chapter In the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. So Mary heard this news she would become the mother of the Messiah. And the angel had to tell her, do not be afraid. And then she asked him, how can this be? What are the things in our lives that happen to us? And we respond, how can this be? How can this be that my beloved left me? How can this be that my mother has cancer? How can this be that my child is flunking out of school? How can this be that I might have to leave my house? When you and I ask that question, how can this be? The Lord answers us, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. When life seems impossible, God sends the Holy Spirit so that we might know comfort and hope and joy and strength and endurance. Like Mary, we ask, how can this be? And like Mary, we hear this answer, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Amen. A litany based on Psalm 42. 
As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me continually, Where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I walk about mournfully because the enemy oppresses me? As with a deadly wound in my body, my adversaries taunt me, while they say to me continually, where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. A reading from Lamentations from the third chapter. I am one who has seen affliction under the rod of God's wrath. He has driven and brought me into darkness without any light. Against me alone he turns his hand again and again all day long. He has made my flesh and my skin waste away and broken my bones. He has besieged and enveloped me with bitterness and tribulation. He has made me sit in darkness like the dead of long ago. He has walled me about so that I cannot escape. He has put heavy chains on me. Though I call and cry for help, he shuts out my prayer. He has blocked my ways with hewn stones. He has made my paths crooked. He is a bear lying in wait for me, a lion in hiding. He led me off my way and tore me to pieces. He has made me desolate. He bent his bow and set me as a mark for his arrow. He shot into my vitals the arrows of his quiver. I have become the laughing stock of all my people, the object of their taunt songs all day long. He has filled me with bitterness. He has saved me with wormwood. He has made my teeth grind on gravel and made me cower in ashes. My soul is bereft of peace. I have forgotten what happiness is. So I say, gone is my glory and all that I had hoped for from the Lord. The thought of my affliction and my homelessness is wormwood and gall. My soul continually thinks of it and is bowed down within me. But this I call to mind and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. Each winter as the years grow older, we each grow older. suffer with diseases of body, mind, and spirit. 
and we labor without making ends meet. We and those we love feel discouraged. We pray for relief, we plead for hope. Amen. This candle is traditionally known as the candle of hope, but tonight we light it, acknowledging those things that rob us of hope. Tonight we are seeking and waiting for hope. A reading from Jeremiah, the 29th chapter. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope.
jobs, homes, familiar surroundings, usual patterns of life. We are tempted to forsake joy. We pray for relief, we plead for joy. Amen. This candle is traditionally known as the candle of joy, but tonight we light it, acknowledging those things that rob us of joy. Tonight we are seeking and waiting for joy. A reading from Psalm 126, verses 6 and 7. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Rejoice, rejoice, take heart in the night, though dark the winter and cheerless. The rising sun shall crown you with light, be strong and loving and fearless. Love be our song and love our prayer, and love our endless story. May God fill every day we share, and bring us at last into Let us pray. God of love, our world is filled with hate and we long for love. The ones we love are gone or far from us or estranged from us. We have lost relationships that were precious to us through addiction, breakup, separation, dementia, divorce, and death. We feel isolated and alone and it is difficult to open our hearts again we pray for relief, we plead for love. Amen. This candle is traditionally known as the candle of love, but tonight we light it, acknowledging those things that rob us of love. Tonight we are seeking and waiting for love. A reading from the first letter of John, the fourth chapter. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. Angels announce with shouts of mirth, Him who brings new life to earth. Set every peak and valley humming with the word, the Lord is coming. People are geese and sing today. Love the Lord is on. Let us pray. Emmanuel, God with us. We are seeking and waiting for hope. Emmanuel, God with us. We are seeking and waiting for peace. Emmanuel, God with us. We are seeking and waiting for joy. Emmanuel, God with us. We are seeking and waiting for love. Come, Emmanuel, God with us. Come and bring us hope. Bring us peace, bring us joy, bring us love. Amen. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lonely exile here, until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. At this time, if you are at home, I invite you to participate.
participate by listening. Um, you can sing along if you know the hymns that are going to be sung. You might go in the kitchen and find a small bowl and put some water in it. You might light a candle as you remember someone who has died or as you name a particular loss in your life in the last year or in the last number of years. You might look at a Christmas card that you got today and enjoy the painting on it. For those of us here, we're going to take some time to wander around the sanctuary. In the center aisle, you may receive affirmation of baptism from Pastor Beth Nebraski. If you would like to light a candle to remember a loss or to honor someone who has died, you can come for this table. Barbara will light a candle in memory, or so you can say the name of the person, if it's a person, or if it's a loss and you don't want to name it aloud, you can just stand here while she lights a candle for you. You can come to this side and sit in front of the painting of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Or you can come to the kneeling bench here to receive a word of forgiveness of sin from me. Or you may walk to the aisle on your left side to receive anointing with prayer, with anointing with oil and prayers for healing. So at this time again, I invite you to sit and listen, to sing, to remember your baptism by dipping your fingers in water, to find something on which you might meditate, to light a candle, or to receive the word of forgiveness of sin or prayers for healing if you're at home. We will pray silently with you and we invite you to pray for yourself. We enter into the darkness seeking the light. Oh. Uh -huh. 
Peace of God be with you always. And also with you. Let us share with one another a sign of peace. A reading from Luke, the second chapter. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration that was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. 
all went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph, and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. At this time, I invite you to prepare your elements for communion. and praise. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, Holy Lord, God of power, God of might, heaven and earth are filled with your grace. Blessed Jesus, show trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Feast at the table where Christ comes to make a home with you. Thanks be to God. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto everlasting life. Amen. O God of all seasons and senses, grant us the sense of your timing to submit gracefully and rejoice quietly in the turn of the seasons. In this season of short days and long nights, of gray and white and cold, Teach us the lesson of endings. Children growing, friends leaving, loved ones dying. Grieving over, grudges over, blaming over, excuses over. O oh God, God, grant us the sense of your time. In this season of short days and long nights. Of gray and white and cold. Teach us the lessons of beginnings. That such waitings and endings may be the start of may be the starting place, a planting of seeds which bring to birth what is ready to be born, something right and just and different, a new song, a deeper relationship, a fuller love, in the fullness of your time. Oh God, oh God grant, grant us the, the sense of, of your, your time. time. We are called to ponder history and await the coming Christ to embody God's compassion for each fragile human life. God is with us in our longing to bring Jesus, who came as a baby long ago and who will come again in glory at the end of time, come to you now and keep you forever. Amen. Amen. 